Give us an example, possibly, of a story. People hold on to stories. Of you know, they do. Yeah, and, of course. And maybe <laughs> just the emotions of maybe a female or a male or an archetype of possibly a sports person or someone who's just out there, family, just sharing love and peace and harmony wherever they go. But just a story that people can sort of relate to. The emotional connection to storytelling is so powerful, mm -hmm. you know, and. Um, there's been so many wonderful journeys along the way, but there are a few that really stand out for me. Mm. Um, one in particular is a lady, two ladies actually, that I was helping last year in Australia that I no longer do help, mm. which is an absolute testament yeah. in its own right. Absolutely. Because they've maintained and improved their health on their own accord, yeah. becoming their own healers. Correct. One had been morbidly obese for close to 40 years. Mm. She weighed 167 kilograms at five foot eight when she came to see me. Had no understanding of her ability, had no awareness of her power, mm. what she was capable of doing. Was completely had complete disillusionment to what this life had to offer for her. Suffice to say, after we'd worked for about a year, she lost 60 kilograms. But what she gained was so much more than that. Yeah. She now walks 25,000 steps a day. Sure. Okay. Every day. Um, that. That's her exercise. Yeah. But that's her meditation. You see, the thing is, we always compartmentalize. We mm -hmm. separate meditation from exercise, from nutrition. We're actually, they're all part of the same continuum. Yeah. Having a meal is a form of meditation, if you wish for it to be so. Yeah. Sacrament, ceremony, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, sitting at a part without rushing. Without rushing. Yeah, without being too busy, without making it a goal, without making the achievement, without wasting minds. We make this something we have to do, something we need to do, instead mm. of making it a ceremony. Absolutely right. I think, you know, the person that I learned so much about the truth behind this mm. was when I was listening to a book, and I read the book from mm. Joe Vitale and Professor Hugh Lin yeah. in Oponopono. Yeah. And Joe asked uh, Professor Lin, what would you like to have? And he said, I want a burger and chips. And he was so flabbergasted by it. He's like the spiritual mentor wanting burger and chips. So he asked him about it and he said, it's about the appreciation. It's about how you see what you're about to eat. Yeah. Now, I think this is also where we get so hung up. You know, there's so many different nutritional protocols out there, yeah. which can sometimes enforce the masculine, which is not always a bad thing, mm -hmm. creating boundary. Mm -hmm. But if the masculine is so over-empowering, that boundary becomes a prison. And then we become neurotic. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the biometrics you mentioned. You know, they're a tool. But they're no more powerful, they're not more powerful than your experience. You know, you can have a wonderful HRV as yeah. an example and feel terrible. Yeah. Or feel amazing and have terrible HRV. Mm. I think it's so important to go accordance to how you feel, mm. to take on the science, to see what value it has, but to not allow it to become your reality. Because it's only one piece of the puzzle. It's not yeah, the puzzle it's itself. Well, let's go back to the story. How did you mm. start the journey? Maybe give us a framework of autonomic coaching because I think it's important. Sure. And let's just call her for interest sake, Lindsay. That's not her name. <laughs> but we're talking about Lindsay now. She's lost a lot of weight now. She's 60 kgs down. She's walking 25,000 steps. She's integrated meditation with her walking. Take us through your framework. So for her, it was really slow. Mm. Um, some you can really go into it and do an overall because they, they want that. Mm. The ego wants that more than anything else. Most of the time it's not necessary. <laughs> In all honesty, most of the time you can create so much change by putting a few little aids to help the communication in the body. And I believe disease is the outcome of poor communication. Mm. So in, her, in Lindsay's case, um, how I start my process with everybody is to have them complete a comprehensive subjective questionnaire, mm. which provides basis of provisional diagnostic outcome. Questionnaires cover all 12 major physiological systems and then four subsystems that have an association with them. And then based on that, I can see where the priority lies in terms of their experience, where we need warrant further objective investigation mm. through particular blood markers, additional functional tests ranging from everything from DNA to organic acids, storm, mm. hair, yeah. all the different elements that we can get from the body. Mm. And then from that objective analysis, 
cross-referencing and creating correlation to the subject of experience. Because it's very important that we don't treat the numbers, we treat the person. Yeah. And the numbers can tell the story or not tell the story, whereas when we look at the picture as a whole, we get indications. So we found out with her, there was severe dysautonomia going on. The maturity wasn't regulated. Yeah. Um, and instead of throwing her into bioidentical hormonal therapy or putting her into a liver cleanse or getting rid of the candida and the mycotoxins that were ravishing her immune system and completely creating havoc in terms of their ability to accumulate oxalates and the devastation that that can do in its own right, I gave her the objective just to move a small amount every day. The objective is just to drink a little bit more water every day. And once she was able to achieve that objective, she really started to feel better. And she felt better because she wasn't congested. Yeah. Paracelsus is my favorite physician of all time. Mm. And my favorite quote of his is, is but one disease, mm. and his name is congestion. Mm. So she empowered herself initially by reducing the congestion. Okay. And once we did that, um, we put her through the necessary peptide support to help the hormonal systems. That worked okay, but it needed a little bit more. So she went on a bit of thyroid grain in mm. supporting the liver in the utility of thyroid grain. Massively had a positive impact. Um, then we went into once the metabolic systems were well supported and able to support immunity mm. and mitochondrial replication, um, or mitochondrial DNA replication and the transference of RNA sequences in doing so, mm. which thyroid hormone plays a direct and intimate role in doing. Then we started to look into ways to remove the candida and also the associated oxalates that were coming along mm. with it. But also looking into the reasons as to why. Um, at that point, I didn't understand. So in a way, although I did help her lose a lot of weight, my knowledge at that point was limited in not providing her with all the variables, which later I did when I understood those variables. So it was a bit frustrating because you got down to about 107 and we couldn't break the barrier. Later, I came up with a hypothesis and understanding, and this is through another client of mine, and he'll be happy for me to mention his name, yeah. Dr. Dominic Nishvitz. Yeah. And Dominic, you know, when him and I met, it was just an instant connection, mm. like family, complete family. Uh, he's a mentor, a friend, student and sometimes as well and we feed off each other's knowledge and mm. he's a wealth of knowledge mm. you know transcending so many professors and doctors that i've met along the way because of the humility that he exudes but in his case he had a burden of h pylori which was throwing off his glutamate decarboxylase activity just causing those nmda receptors to be overly excited mm. throwing off the the rhythm within his pituitary and his adrenals and this was causing quite a lot of compromise in his ability to grow muscle and lose fat in the way which he deserved because he's very, very disciplined. Mm. We fixed that up. Um, he was less anxious and more mm. flow state energy. Uh, to date, he's gained 10 kilograms of muscle. Uh, mm. And he says so himself for seven years, he was starving himself because he didn't know what was holding him back. Yeah. So he was trying to fight it with functional medicine protocols, so every direction, detoxification, autophagy, mm. fasting, so on. Mm. And they all have their place. Sure. They all have their place, but they're not the gospel. Yeah. Nothing's <laughs> the gospel. Nothing's the yeah. gospel at all.